What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers with a kind of a mixed bag video today in that I, I think I came up with a pretty good concept, I just don't think my execution of the concept has been particularly great, although I do have an excuse for that one, which I'll get into a bit later. But what I've been looking at today is something that's going to deal mass destruction again, but something to designed to work alongside the Death Lotus, in particular to work alongside the decoy part of the Death Lotus, to the extent where I think I'm actually going to make a pure decoy Death Lotus at some point, a decoy Lotus that just spits out decoys, because they're really useful for uh, sort of chaff generation, heat uh, or flare generation, won't make that mistake again, whatever you want to call them, chaff or flares, I know what they are now. Um, <laughs> But yeah, let, before I waffle on too long, let me dive straight in, show you what this is, and then you can be the judge of whether or not the execution was as good as it could have been. Um, so, what I have in front of me here is, as yet unnamed, uh, it was potentially going to be called the Frog, but I'll leave it down to you guys what you, exactly what you want to call this. But the concept is very much like uh, an MRLS, so uh, a multi multiple rocket launcher system, basically, using projectors, and this is designed, as I said, to work alongside the Death Lotus. So we have a couple of those up there for a demonstration later, but I'll just give you a a quick tour of the functions first. Um, reasonably pleased with the aesthetic, but there was a better looking one that unfortunately there was an accident. I'll show a clip of that near the end and talk about it briefly because uh, yes, I make mistakes just as often as everyone else and I think this one was a pretty big one. <laughs> but hey, this is the interior, nothing particularly special here. Um, quite dark as well, I'll turn my lights on just so you can see a little bit better. Um, but yeah, the absolute basics needed to make this thing work and, and you to survive and nothing more. The real deal is when we jump into the cockpit seat, I quite like the view out the front of this thing as well. And if we turn on the bars, I'll talk a little bit about what all these buttons do. First of all, we've obviously got a camera which is neatly pointed at a target for us down there. But we've also got a whole bunch of different timers and they're because I've set this thing up to have different fire modes. So I'll demonstrate those first, but basically you can see the banks of rockets we've got in there, and they are sort of a mixture of a kinetic projectile with warheads on the back side of it with a sensor on them designed to activate when they penetrate a target. So you have a few options with this. First of all, we have the single fire mode. So if I press two there, it's going to build a single rocket in each bank at a time, and then it's going to launch that rocket, and then it's going to move to the next one in the bank. And the nice thing about the single fire mode is if I wait a second, let it say get one more beyond, I can actually now press that button again to trigger another wave of those single fire and create a sort of nice wave effect of these things launching out. But that's relatively boring, so while you can keep pressing two and end up with quite a decent stream of rockets coming out of it, let's stop that. Nine stops all of the, the process regardless of which one it is you're using. And then we have a rapid fire, a staged fire, and a cluster fire. So the rapid fire and the staged fire are kind of combinations of different amounts of rockets building at the same time. So you've got rockets shooting in twos and then rockets shooting in fours. And then finally, and obviously the one everyone is kind of vaguely interested in, is number five, which is the cluster fire, which of course does them all at once. What I do find really interesting about this though, is if you look, they don't all shoot at, like at the same time, even though they're all being done in exactly the same way on the same timers, somehow there's an inconsistency there. If anyone has any idea what this inconsistency is, I'd be really interested. It's not caused any problems, it's just weird. I, I don't understand why they're, why they're behaving like that. But in the end, that's actually a beneficial behaviour for our purposes in that it spreads the rockets out, means they don't all launch together. So I'll stop that again for a second. Um, they will be shooting down on our target, but I'm pretty certain that without any decoys, let's go and have a look, yeah, without any decoys, well in fact some of them have made it in, so let's go and check the damage out from a few waves of these with a lot of turrets firing back and no decoys at all to keep them going, and the damage has been pretty minimal, and that's mostly because the uh, warheads get blown up. So obviously if I'd just made blast doors, they would have been breaching the target fine, but not doing nearly as much damage. The trick with this, of course, is that it's not supposed to be fired like that. It's supposed to be fired with some decoys alongside. So rather than do a live test, because that tends to lead to a lot of dead time, I'm going to kind of show some clips of this thing in action against various targets, including the NGC in the background. Uh, and the reason it's including the NGC is because this weapon's kind of designed for the NGC. I just haven't, until I perfect it, I'm not going to put it on there yet. Um, and while I do that, I'll talk a little bit about some of the flaws with this and some of the bits that I think I could have executed a bit better. Now firstly, there is how close together the projectiles are. I'm sure you'll notice that 
there's a very real possibility of a chain reaction with these things because they're so tightly clustered together which makes the launcher quite tight and small they have this chain reaction effect and so what i would probably do in future is spread the projectiles out in the sort of the launch bay and then because i've been able to spread because i've spread them out i'll be able to put onto them a i'd put a gyroscope and basically a decoy on a long pole spin the thing so that it has its own built-in decoys as well as having um, perhaps support from the Death Lotus. The other thing that I'm not so happy with this is the layout of the two launchers. I did it, there's a lot of artistic license with this particular design at the moment. Having built one that was all very standard looking, I wanted to do something that looked kind of cool at the same time. So there's exposed pipework and exposed bits all over the place. And also I went for that sort of twin pod layout, which of course actually means that you don't really hit the target that you're aiming at. You go either side of it. So I would probably stack these things on top of each other and have one slightly offset from the other so that they arrive sort of in a, in a stream rather than in one big cluster. But aside from that, there are, I think, some positives for it. I, I think it's got very nice penetration, uh, especially against heavily armoured ships. Um, one of the weaknesses of the Death Lotus, certainly, is that once you get up against heavy armour, it's not very good at that sort of thing. Um, the explosives take a long time to go through it and you're only going to destroy stuff by sort of weight of explosives rather than sort of reasonably decent penetration and high hitting shots. The other thing with this is of course, it's it's quite a maneuverable design. It can be re-aimed quite easily and you can move it about quite easily. You can build it into a ship quite easily and it doesn't have the limitation of something like the Death Lotus where you've got to be five, 10 kilometers out to use it properly. Um, it's got timers on it to turn off the mass blocks, and they happen after about two, three seconds, if I remember rightly. End result being, it, it, it's, you know, it's never going to have any problems with gravity shields, and you only have to be 100 or so meters away in order to fire it if you really wanted to. The last bit I really like is, is the fire selection sort of choices and the way you can get it to do different barrages. I don't think that's particularly practical. Uh, I just like the functionality, so... <laughs> Yeah, what do you guys think I could add to this? What do you think is uh, good? What do you think is bad? You know, there's definitely some bad points. It's definitely not a good, ex you know, a, a perfect execution or even necessarily a good execution. It's just an execution of the concept. And just quickly before we finish, uh, I want to show you sort of just a little bit about how I set it all up, how it was built. So I'm going to dive into another world for that because there I've got the sort of the component parts laid out. So the first thing I'll do is talk a bit about the, the timers and the group set up in this, because obviously that side of things is not super complex, but I did have to put quite a lot of thought and quite a lot of naming into it, as I'm sure you can see here. Um, but basically I worked off the, the sort of, uh, essentially a modular concept for the timers. Um, I think in programming it would be called sort of object orientated. So each individual projector and welder array, which is these T1, A and B, have two timers that do things specific to that and they don't trigger anything else, they just build and launch that particular projectile. And then there is a series of master timers that are responsible for sort of triggering each bay and then starting the next one. As you can see here, this this, this will, it what it does is it ensures the gravi gravity is off, it turns on the welders for that bay, um, and then starts the bay's specific timers and also the next bay. Um, so that's how I did the sort of, the, the, the uh, ah, why is the word evading me? That's where, how I did them so they were doing it sequentially one after the other. And of course, because of how it's set up, you can start, by the time sort of this timer has gone down to bay three, you can start bay one again and it will keep looping round and, you know, indefinitely. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And then on top of that, there are a couple of sort of master master timers which are responsible for doing like single fire in fact just starts bay one uh, that was just so that i could have something that was clearly labeled uh, but the rest of these obviously are responsible for triggering multiple bays at a time and as long as they are like this um, they're split by one bay each time you won't have a conflict between the timers which meant that for the cluster fire one, the cluster fire one doesn't work like any of the others. This kind of replaces this bay timer because this bay eight start, the sort of the looping effect was actually breaking things. You don't need that with the cluster where they're all going at once. So this literally loops itself uh, and actually went on to the second page. You can see here, it actually just starts itself again. 
and what it's doing is starting each one of the individual banks um, sort of manually as such um, and then sort of as far as what's actually in those sort of timers that side of things is relatively straightforward it is a case of and if I roll over here to the sort of actual mechanism that's inside I can talk a bit more clearly about that but it's a case of um, the welders being turned on which will weld up the projection then the uh, Grinders here are turned on to cut the projection away and the welders are turned off. And then finally, the, the timer on the warhead itself is started, which is the one that turns off the mass block. And the gravity generators, which are specific to each bank so that they don't interfere with each other, um, are triggered briefly in order to launch that projectile. Um, one cool thing I do think, I'll have to start this up just briefly, because when you've got this thing going in like full fire mode, it actually looks pretty damn cool on the back. Is this the right cluster? Yeah, this is the right cluster fire. Good, I did update this. So let's trigger that now. When you've got... Uh, oh no, that's not the one that starts all the timers. That's a shame. There's one in particular that gets like all the timers on the back flashing in sequence and looks ridiculously cool <laughs> just because it's a load of flashing lights. Um, but yeah, that's about as best as I can explain it. It's it's sort of a difficult thing to explain concisely. I hope you got a vague idea of what on earth I meant. Let me delete that so it doesn't keep spewing those things out. Uh, from there, as, as I normally do, I just built things up around it. Uh, and then finally, just to finish off the video, this here is the remains of the first version. So let me bring this with us and I'll stick it next door so you can see that they are, they're kind of similar, but they're definitely not the same and that is because uh, with the accompanying clip I was working away on this to the point where I would pretty much got it finished and I was putting in a gravity shield uh, so I dumped down my spherical gravity generators forgetting that I actually had because it's in my building world I've actually got some copies of the projectiles just hanging around nearby and you can see the rest projectile through the roof scared the hell out of me had no idea what had happened until I went outside and then went oh when did I last save was it it was it was two and a half hours ago wasn't it why did you do that oh my god ah uh, so that's kind of my excuse why this thing I really wanted to have it slightly more polished do a few more bits with it before I release the video and I was just about to go yes right now I can focus on getting the firing really good maybe add some <clears throat> maybe add some decoys as you can see this one had a convey it up turret system um, and unfortunately I didn't have time really wanted to get the video out so there you go there, there, there was a, a slightly better version hope you like this idea I I kind of I certainly like how it looks um, I kind of like how it functions there's bits in it that I think are, I'm gonna keep for a better version but I do think that it's definitely got some solid flaws as well <laughs> Pretty sure you guys will agree, but yeah, hit me up with what you think you'd change and, and what you think you'd keep. Uh, it would be really interesting to hear. And otherwise, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, hit that subscribe, hit that share if you're not already. Please hit like, please hit share, really helps me and the channel out. And otherwise, I will catch you next time.